Hey guys, you've joined me on a short afternoon really out in the woods on the weekend and I've just come to make a cup of coffee really and just enjoy being in the outdoors. It's a lovely early spring day. I've got the fire going and really, really simple crane and pot hanger. Probably the most simple you could do. Uh, and I'll just run it through you quickly. Got the tarp set up pretty low profile behind me. Don't really need the tarp up at all today, but you've got to get that practice in. Anyway, let me show you the setup. Okay, here we go. So we've got the fire just on a small bed of embers there. There's the 10 centimeter zebra billy just on a little forked stick. And then up here, literally just a simple bale notch. Hopefully that'll focus in a minute. Bit of a bit, I'll do it this side. If I come this side, hopefully you can see it better. There you go. Look at that. Look at that. Simple little bale notch there on a simple pot hanger, and then the crane arm just goes down into the ground there. Right, let's, this should be boiling soon. Now get that coffee on. Cup of coffee. Backpack over there. Top, pot hanger. Heaven. Oh yes, boiling buddy. Awesome. Coffee time. I'm afraid you guys aren't gonna be able to see this beautiful bit of the, the coffee pouring, but rest assured, looks good. Cheers. Oh crap. Oh man, all over my trousers. <sighs> ah, it's good. It smells amazing. Whoa, I'm so white. That exposure, man. Menu. Bear with me. Ah, oh, is that exposure better? I, think I hope so. I was like a ghost. Casper. Good old Casper over here. Had a quite a few questions about uh, how to maintain your cookser and look after it. Well, I spoke to Will Canavan who made this one, uh, and he says he uses uh, the food, food safe raw linseed oil, uh, but you can use walnut oil. And I did use uh, raw linseed oil on the outside of it. And I was quite conscious about what I put on the inside of it because it's going in my body. Did a lot of research and looked up walnut oil. It's quite expensive, but it smells amazing. It almost has like a coffee smell to it. So um, I've given this a coat of uh, walnut oil and Will was saying you just wipe it clean with a cloth. You don't need any uh, soapy fairy liquid or soap, you know, um, soap suds or anything like that to clean it. Uh, so he just recommends wiping it clean with a cloth, just a damp cloth and then uh, re-oiling it. So that's what I've been doing. And um, yeah, the walnut oil, the dog's bollocks that is. Absolutely awesome stuff. Really nice. This is a pretty big cookser. Will makes them at 10 ounces. They can take 10 ounces. So the the traditional cookers take about eight, and then the smaller cookers about six ounces. But um, to be honest, you get more bang for your buck, as they say, and you get more coffee and more drink in the bigger cookser. Doesn't take up much room on my bag, and actually, I just clip mine on the outside of my bag. So traditionally, we do a bit of theory time at the end of our videos and I thought I'd do a bit more theory time idea popped into my head going back to the primitive man I'm quite interested in the primitive man at the moment and just our primitive ancestors and how they hunted how they killed how they ate how they made clothing and everything like that but um, what I wanted to know is when primitive man or woman has killed an animal or a fish what made them cook it what made them know to cook it Obviously you can't eat raw meat as such. There are some meats that you can, but most of the meat you cannot eat raw, especially fish. So was it a case of they ate the fish, members of their tribe died, they figured out what's going on, you know, why are they dying? Maybe they thought, well, let's burn it and, and, and burn the fish and maybe either as a ritual or maybe, they, maybe that's what they did, they burnt the animal as a ritual maybe they sacrificed one to the gods or something like that and then they smelt the amazing meat smell that came off that animal and thought hmm this is so much better than eating it raw who knows guys chucking that theory out your way ping me some comments in the uh, comment section below let me know your thoughts what made them cook food because originally they they must not have known to cook it straight away they must have killed the animal 
ate it and then probably got ill from it. So I know they had much harder stomachs than we do, but what made them cook it? Was it sacrificing to the gods and they smelt that lovely meat? Was it they were really angry at the fact that that animal had killed their members of their tribe by poisoning it or something, so they burnt it and then they smelt the meat? Must have been from cooking it and smelling it that they thought that smells so much better and then tasting it. But who knows, there's a theory guys. Crack on, let me know in the comment section below. Okay guys, so I thought I'd just tell you a bit about the um, cooking setup that I've got for today. All it is is a stick a crane arm, I'm gonna call it a crane arm, that's about four feet long. And I've just chamfered it off at this end basically and made a spike, but made it flat. And then I've done the same at the other end and dug that in the dirt. And I've, the best thing to do is to put it more vertical than you think because your weight of your billy can with that water in is gonna make it pull down naturally anyway. So I would put it steeper than you think to begin with and then as you put that weight of your billy can on there it will naturally start to lower towards the fire anyway and then all you do is if it's too high too high from the fire you just pull it down gently and it i'm in soft ground here where i am it's sphagnum moss and it's a pine forest it's very soft and peaty so it, it, it just gives really easily um so that's my advice is maybe stick it a bit more vertical than you think as long as this point here is directly above your fire um you should be fine because your pot hanger would just admittedly you probably want it a little bit to the well left or right a little bit to the side of your fire because as it comes down that's that's going to go from here and then swing down over your flames it takes a bit of practice but it's dead dead simple to make i make the stake at the bottom end with the axe and then i just did that one with a knife um and then all i've got somewhere around here where the hell did i put it here you go simple pot hanger i've got these at my bushcraft camp just find a stick that's got a notch in it like that with a bit of a shoulder I just saw it off there, I leave it a couple of inches. Uh, if you leave it too long, it catches on things. But you, you don't want it too short because your bail arm on your billy will just fall off. So you need about three to, three to four inches. Then I'll just cut a, a bail notch in there. <clears throat> it needs to have a bit of an upward angle up here so that this spike on the crane goes right up into it. And you need a, at least to go two thirds of the way through, three quarters of the way through at least over half either way go over halfway through the stick don't go too far because it weakens this part but just go over halfway through the stick and then that just sits on there like that now when you're putting your billy on here obviously if i hang that like that is now hold on okay if i hang that like that is now over the fire fire's gone out and i go to try and put my billy can on now i'm going to burn my hands and it's going to get really hot and i'm likely to drop it so the tip is over to the side of your fire, either over here or where, over here. Let's do it over here. So get your billy can on the hook first over to the side of your fire, okay? Just give it a little swing test just to check that it's not gonna go everywhere. everywhere. And then gently lift it up and then come up to here. Gently put it on there. And then what I do as I'm adjusting it is I hold this here and I hold the arm here. So I've got the maximum amount of support for the arm, the crane arm and the pot hanger. It just helps otherwise if you're just doing it like this this could ping off and then it water goes over your fire and your fire goes out and let's face it that's going to put you in such a bad mood when you want a cup of coffee so i would just support here support here move that up and down now obviously when you start your fire to begin with your flames are going to go quite high so i almost build up some flames first get a good bed of embers and then put on some slightly larger um, sticks about wrist wrist thickness you can split them with your axe if you want um, and then that will get you a more constant flame a more consistent flame because at the beginning the fire is going to be really erratic and it might start burning up your stick so burn it up first let it burn down a tiny bit and then start building it up with bigger sticks and you can control it a little bit more but dead easy to make and you can tie these to your backpack you know if you're moving about all you do is just pull this out there's the uh, same, I basically did the opposite at the other end. You could make that a stake, but I don't. I like to think that when you wedge that in the ground, it's got more of a leverage somehow when you lift it up. I don't know, it's just a personal preference. It's almost like a spade. It goes in like that and that resists it in the ground. Uh, but yeah, like I say, you can just not lash these two together, lash them to your backpack, and then just travel around if you're moving about. You then don't have to make them again. But they're dead simple to make. They probably take about 10 minutes to make overall. If you have any leftover water in your billy like this, I always make sure I bring extra water. I've got another water in there. Um, let your fire die, die down and then just pour it around. I, I like to go around the edge of the fire first, then in the middle, because at least by going around the edge of the fire, I'm going to stop it spreading out to the rest of the forest. 
so it kind of leaves a, a sort of protection zone so I pull the water around the edge of the fire first then I pour what's left of it over the middle I then also spread it out a bit just break up the embers and obviously in a minute when that's cooled down because that's still quite warm I'm gonna leave it as I found it which would mean there was no trace of a fire here to begin with so I've got to leave it like that it's a very important part of uh, being in the woods and just having fires when you finish with your billy can afterwards uh, I let mine soot up I don't bother trying to keep it clean it just takes absolutely ages um, and you just end up cleaning and cleaning and cleaning you're in the woodland you're having fires it's going to get muddy it's going to get dirty I like to just leave it as it is and build up that soot layer um, what I do is just a bit of moss a bit of sphagnum moss here I just wipe off the kind of thick soot that I've just got from the fire it just gets the excess off around there a little bit around the uh, bale on there fold it down that's my salt and pepper in there the little two coca-cola bottle lids put that there put that there and then I've got my Sami style oil skin pouch made by Tim at Blue Angelical uh, I'll pop his website in the description uh, all made in Britain really really nice kind of uh, waxed canvas bag and at least then it prolongs the life of the bag as well and this just happens to fit this is one of the sort of foraging pouches I think but it just happens to fit perfectly in there and there we go doesn't get my backpack dirty and it prolongs the life of my backpack all about looking after the equipment that you own this is the bit I've been looking forward to on this video um, this is my new day pack it's a, one of the Dutch uh, backpacks and it, I've, it's very very hard to find I spent ages trying to find this backpack when I saw it I think I saw it on Instagram if you're on Instagram by the way follow me TA Outdoor Official there's a link in the description I do regular posts on there but anyway I saw this somewhere on Instagram and I had to get it I just had to get it I'm a bit of a sucker a bit of a backpack geek to be honest I love my backpacks uh, so I've got a lot of army surplus backpacks I've got the Swedish LK35 I've got a German army surplus one and a Dutch surplus one now I've gone through backpacks like hot dinners um, because I've not really found the right one this is for a day pack um, I've I've come away as my uh, overnight bag like two night three night um, overnight backpack I've come away from the LK35 purely because um, I do find it's a great bag it's a really really good bag and with the kidney belt um, it just it's great support the only thing is, is I'm coming away from these kind of bucket style bags where you you need to be regimented with what you put where um, and I just find sometimes uh, things can change out in the woods and what you set out and you packed how you packed it uh, back at home completely changes to what you need suddenly when it's either raining or um, your, your fire's not working or you need your knife or something like that I just find it's a bit too big really it's one big bucket bag um, so I've re re reverted I have reverted back to my snug pack stamina 40 litre um, backpack for my overnighters so this is the backpack itself it's got nice I want I like tall side pouches I'm getting a new uh, cooking setup, and uh, it's a liter. It's going to be a liter long canteen, um, liter long, a liter canteen, steel canteen, and this this long side pouch can fit it. You can get a lot of short, fat ones, but there's not many long, kind of thinner ones out on the market. So I was instantly drawn to that, to the long one. Also because I could put my knives in there, and I get much easier access to get knives in there, and my Barco Laplander, which is fairly long it all fits in the side pockets also axe you can get your axe it, it's it's not sealed at the bottom here so any dirt or soot it doesn't build up any water it just runs straight through but you can get an axe in there nice and easy and because I've got a 16 inch hatch here it actually fits perfectly in there really really well it doesn't dangle down out here like a 24 inch handle would just come right down here and it wouldn't feel right when I'm walking but anyway that fits absolutely perfect so I was chuffed with that straight away but let me just show you the side pockets in this stuff I've got my kind of cooking stuff uh, coffee, uh, first aid kit, head torch and everything like that. I won't get it all out yet, this is not a full review of the backpack, just an overview. I will give you a review of all my backpacks, let me know guys if you want me to do a review of all the backpacks I've got in one video. In this side pouch, like I say, I've got my knife, easy access, bang, can get it straight on the belt. Got my Laplander folding saw, again it's, you know, eight, nine, probably nine, probably ten inches or so, so fairly long, but that can fit in there perfectly. 
and that's where I keep all my knives and cutting implements and there's a bit of room on top as well so really easy uh, in the main compartment also on the edge it's got this like it's not molly webbing but it is webbing as such but it's got holes here in all of them now this is great because I can get the small carabiners you can get those really small ones and I could just look at the amount of opportunities for clipping points on here to just put carabiners in and clip anything to the backpack then in the main compartment under the lid here it's got a some webbing here where you could put a bedroll it's got quite a bit of space but I just put my uh, shamag or shamag just in there uh, and then main compartment I've just got a bit of deer antler on there red deer antler nice pull cord and this is what I love hopefully you guys can see this let me make the camera a bit higher right this is what I love about this pack it's so deceiving how much gear you can put in this pack um, at first I thought this is so narrow when you look at it I thought that's so narrow it's not going to fit much in but it's a 35 litre pack obviously including the side pouches and this is what I love it's got it's compartmentalized so it's got a bit in the middle here a bit down the back here now in the back as a standard with a lot of um, army surplus gear it's got a pad and not and this is a really thick heavy duty pad and I just leave that in there because that a keeps the structure of the bag a lot of bags I've seen just collapse on themselves and they're really saggy and I don't really like that my, my snug pack does it it just kind of so when one of the downsizes it just sags but you can put foam in them to keep their shape whereas this is real thick foam so a it gives you lots of padding on the back here B, you can use that foam as a kneel pad uh, if the ground's really wet um, and it's just very practical you know you, there's a lot of uses for it so then in this bit here it's kind of a long thin pocket I just keep my gloves in there but you can put I've got my uh, journal I've got a little bushcraft journal which I've left at home but I put that down there it's kind of more made for books and folders and things I guess um, for the military but you can put anything in there so that's a kind of long thin stuff that can go in there then in these two compartments compartments they're basically the same size I keep I'll show you how much gear can be in it let me get that up a bit there I keep my cookser I keep my tinder pouch this is just in one big tinder pouch I keep char tin I keep a sleeping bag cover there which I don't always put in there uh, paracord in this uh, uh, this was made again by Tim actually from blue angelical uh, it's a simple it's almost like a possibles pouch really but it's more like a um, your hygiene bag, hygiene pouch. Uh, he's give, he does them in wax uh, canvas, this kind of oil skin, and he does them in uh, actual canvas as well. And he puts the zips in. It's all handmade by Tim at Blue Angelical. But I use this one for my paracord, um, and it's great. It's really, really good, and I can fit quite a bit of paracord in that. So that's that, uh, and then spare camera batteries and things like that. That's all in one pocket there, and there's even if I show you when I put it back, there's still so much room. It's unbelievable, this bag. So good. I don't think I'll ever need a new day pack after this, he says, as he's addicted to blimmin' backpacks. In this one, I've got my canteen, just water bottle. Then underneath that, I've got my 10 centimeter zebra billy. So that all fits. And I've still got space underneath. Oh, I found my lens cap. I was looking for that. So I have to admit, and, and you see, I can customize this. I can change what I put in these these pockets but it's just so much easier I know when I want to cook something I go to my right hand compartment here I've got my water and my zip billy to fill up and get that water boiling quickly I've got all my cooking stuff over on the right if I need to light fires get fire lighting I've got all my fire lighting stuff over here on the left uh, and I've got my tools and sharp tools here in this left hand pouch I'm gonna get a patch for it I'm gonna do some mods to it loads of ideas I've got to try and do this up but there we go let's just show you the back as well quickly it's got the under here uh, you've got your like information um, card where you can put your info on uh, who you are maybe an emergency contact number again that's all water kept waterproof in there there's the original Dutch registration number on it there um, so that's pretty awesome and padding incredibly well padded and it sits really high on your back but again not a full review guys it pretty much was a full review but I'll talk about backpacks in a later issue. Hope you enjoy it. I'm not going to throw these away. I'll just leave them by the tree. I may come back to this area. Um, so what I do with this is where I lifted the moss earlier, which is just here. Spread the embers out. Get all the moss that I just had.
there you go. You wouldn't even know I've had a fire there. One of the most important parts of camping, guys, is leave no traces.